what is your favorite metal? For many people it's probably gold because of the value. But you can actually make something that's very much similar to gold. You know, there's brass, which is golden in color. Um, and there's a couple of bronze alloys that uh, are uh, close to gold. But there's something called Nordic gold. Now, I've seen uh, a couple of uh, YouTubers who, who do casting make Nordic gold. I've never done it before myself. So I'm going to attempt it in this video. So welcome all to a metal casting video. So here's what we need for Nordic gold. 89% copper, 5% zinc, 5% aluminium, and 1% tin. Now I'm not sure what the 1% tin is going to add to the mixture, but this is the official recipe, as far as you can call it official. This is what everybody uses that I've seen that made Nordic gold before. And when I Google it, there's only one other recipe that comes up, and that is uh, replacing the 5% zinc with 15% brass, and instead of 89, using 79% copper. But because you don't really know the consistency of, uh, of, of the brass, of the percentages, how much uh, zinc and how much uh, copper is in there, it's, it's quite difficult to tell if, you, if it's just random uh, brass that you found. So sticking with all the base metals is usually easier. So let me show you what I got. Of course, got a nice pile of copper pipes. Uh, copper pipes are pretty pure, basically pure copper and, uh, and they're all clean. There's no solder or anything on there, just basic uh, copper pipe. And uh, you can also use um, uh, Number one, copper wire, just a stripped solid core, uh, bare bright. Um, but I know most scrappers like to turn that stuff in for money. But if you're melting it, it's uh, also very clean and very pure uh, copper to work with. Um, last time when I did uh, my tin bronze and uh, what I made the male snail out of and um, some of the fish from the make a fish uh, challenge uh, of last year, um, I've uh, I've used degaussing cables out of televisions uh, and uh, that have lacquer on on it and um, that burns off and that's uh, kind of a bit, a bit of a mess when uh, when uh, melting that so it's a bit nasty so I, I rather use copper pipes or or number one copper wire for making alloys right and of course you need some uh, tin and some zinc and some aluminium so. I've gathered, uh, this is stuff that I found during dumpster dives or just laying in the street. I think these smaller pieces I found uh, at the construction site. I've measured these up. This, this is actually precisely 50 grams, so that's what I'll be using. Um, the gutters over here uh, are usually zinc and uh, it's actually pure zinc, so that's, uh, that's good stuff. Now, I um, uh, found that big... Uh, huge power cable somewhere that uh, had aluminium cores and this is a piece that's left uh, of it I snipped that into smaller pieces also used that for the make a fish uh, challenge for making the coral uh, casting the liquid aluminium into the orbies um, this piece is exactly I didn't do anything I just took this out weighed it exactly 50 grams so that's good and then I'm gonna need 10 grams of tin I ran out of my uh, my solder, my lead-free solder, which consists of 99% tin and 1% copper, which is ideal for making bronzes or other alloys. But I got some of this stuff. Um, unfortunately, this is not uh, the highest quality of pewter. It's 95% tin, which is close enough, but um, usually I got like 98% uh, uh, pewter. You can kind of tell by the dull color and uh, the 98% actually gets way darker usually when it's older so th there might actually be some I don't know percentages of uh, maybe even aluminium in here you never know doesn't matter in this mixture um, and I'm only going to be needing 10% uh, no 1% uh, which means 10 grams of uh, tin so how much that 5% out of the 10% tin is going to matter I don't know. I also got some of these uh, pewter casting uh, le little Lego figures. Some of these are a bit messy. I'm going to you know, probably cut off his head and uh, see if that's uh, 10 grams because I think one of these is like 
close to 40 50 grams and um, see uh, see if I can get uh, all percentages uh, to specifications now for zinc you can also use wheel weights because those are pretty pure zinc and they usually have the weight on them unfortunately they do have this metal uh, little clip on there that you have to take off and that is also uh, measured in with the weight so you could cut uh, the sides off and uh, and then have a, a couple of pieces like these I actually found them like this and uh, those are also pretty pure uh, zinc and this one is uh, slightly hollow because uh, probably for weight distribution or whatever and uh, this one uh, didn't have any metal on it there was probably some clamp on there I don't know but this together is also exactly 50 grams but unfortunately this has a powder coat over it and that's uh, quite messy and I think there's still some traces of powder coat maybe on this bit these bits this is what I just found in the street um, so I won't be using these now I will probably be melting all the uh, zinc wheel weights I have way more than these uh, in a in a future video again I did some uh, long time ago and I made really big ingots but I'm probably going to be making a couple of really small ingots because if I'm going to be making more alloys like Nordic gold I might want to have like little ingots for mixing so yeah that's for another time let me set everything up and uh, get some stuff melting all right I hereby sentence you to become part of an alloy off with his head wonder if this will work probably easier said than done oh that actually came off right well i wonder let's see there we go well what do you know 10 grams exactly awesome Right, I'm set up for the most part. I got some uh, new crucibles uh, that came in. I actually ordered three of them because the ones I have been using have been worn down quite a bit and when doing pure copper or copper alloys uh, the temperature needs to go really high and it's well best to use a new crucible. Look at that, all nice and shiny. Because after uh, a short period of uh, running at max with a very worn down crucible for some reason the circuit breakers trip and when using a new one that takes way longer <laughs> so yeah um i cut all the uh, copper into bits that i that are hopefully yeah just about the the length of the crucible i'm going to flatten them first to make sure that more fit in and then let's get to melting There, all flattened. Now I guess all of this will go in because the crucible is a three kilogram one and that's based off of gold. Now, who has three kilograms of gold? I don't. Uh, but copper is uh, has, uh, more mass per kilogram, so or basically weighs less than gold. So, but this should fit. Carefully slide it in. You don't want to drop stuff into your crucible otherwise you might crack it there we go looks good let's start melting this and when this is molten when that is molten i'll add the aluminium lowering the melting point wait until that's all nice and mixed then add the tin we'll lower the melting point a tiny bit and then let it cool all the way down until it's barely liquid then add the zinc because adding zinc to a uh, hot mess that uh, becomes an even bigger mess there's a lot of zinc burn off and fumes and stuff and I will be wearing a mask for that right let's make this go to maximum which is 1150 at least for the copper and now we wait 
a lot. Right, it's all molten now. There we go. Let's add the aluminium. That melts quick. Graphite stirring rod in there. Right. Little Lego man head. That'll melt even quicker. Oop, that wasn't the smart thing to do, I guess. There. More stirring. Before I add the zinc, I'm going to let this go for a bit more. I'm uh, now going to add the zinc, which I uh, wrapped up in a neat little bundle. I'll try to get that in there. But also, I'm going to be adding some borax. I've never used borax before, so I wonder how that will help. All right, here it goes. Uh, there might be a slightly violent reaction here. Apparently not so much yet. This might have cooled down too much and started to... There we go. Time for borax. There we go. Well, that actually does quench the flames. Let's keep that closed for a bit. So I now know it's definitely zinc. Well, let's give that uh, at least a few seconds to calm down. All molten. Hardly any dross. Let's pour this thing. That looks good. Tiny bit left in there. Let's see, this thing should be solid now. Yeah, man. There you go. Let's get this thing to some water. Jesus, that's still hot. There we go. Kind of looks just like brass, but less messy. This is uh, quite a nice bar. I'm going to give this a wire brush and uh, show you what I got. Now that this has cooled down, let's see if some of the little bits are still in there. Oh, come here. There you go, it's quite a bit actually. Is there more? Yeah. Let's see what we got. There, only four grams lost. 
and there's a tiny bit stuck in the crucible still and there's a tiny bit on my stirring rod so I'm guessing that's gonna be close to exactly one kilogram so not that much of the zinc burn actually burned off I'm uh, quite surprised and there we have it nicely polished I can definitely see the appeal to this that uh, many metal casters uh, use uh, Nordic gold or make Nordic gold um, I'm going to be using this for a future project involving jewelry pendants uh, to be exact not sure if that's going to work but that'll be uh, for uh, another video but for now I'm very content with uh, this little golden bar I will be making more but off camera because well you got the idea there you have it Nordic gold bar my first pretty happy with this thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one